and welcome to the Tapeworth Community Garden. The cycle of the seasons has almost turned around and we're now well into autumn and well into the harvesting period. And of our winter crops, leeks are all this essential for leek and tatty soup. Unfortunately, Kath noticed when she'd mm. been after planting them that some of them were going a bit funny. Can yeah, you well, I, first of all, I want to say that I thought the leek bed itself was very easy to maintain. I did one weeding, I think, so it's a great crop as far as I'm concerned for the weeding. But I was coming along and at first I thought they were really dry because it had this, because they were really brown and curled leaves. And then I asked Peter, the expert, and he said, no, it was rust, no, leek rust that way round. So can you maybe tell us a little bit, Peter, about the leek rust and how it happened? Right. Essentially, rust is a fungal infection that has what's called pustules Ooh. on the leaves. It sounds, right. sounds quite nasty. And Indeed. In fact, it blows in in the wind. Ah. So it's not as if it was in the soil already. Okay. And the other thing was that you were saying that in your own garden... Yeah, my own garden is literally just a stone's throw away and it seems the leeks there are absolutely fine, no sign of rust at all. Well, as I said, because the uh, spores are windborne, your garden is actually surrounded by quite a lot of woodland, ah, fences and yeah, it's perhaps more yeah. sheltered. Okay. Whereas we get the full brunt of the wind mm. from the prevailing wind, which is mm -hmm. from the west and mm -hmm. northwest. Mm -hmm. mm. So that might have been made a difference. The mm -hmm. other thing that you can do, and I think we have to do a bit of research for next okay. year, before we buy the seeds this winter, ah, resistance. is to look for resistant varieties. Do a bit okay. of research for that. Yeah. Okay. But if you dig one up, yep. not, it's, it's not all lost. because because no. that was my next question. If the leeks do have rust, are they still okay to eat? They're absolutely fine to eat. Great. And the one thing that we do have it's nice long white bits mm -hmm. in the leek mm -hmm. and you can in fact earth them up if oh. you were to so, but these are way too close together to have gotten them to wear okay them up. Oh. but if we prepare the leek just top and tail it yep mm -hmm. and then peel a few of the outer leaves off mm -hmm. and oh, right. we're absolutely yep. ready to go yeah Fantastic. What's your favourite way of eating? Leek and tatty soup. soup. I think Definitely that's everyone. everybody's favourite. Yeah, great. So the, the other thing that I, I would say... I can smell them actually, lovely. Mm, is one thing that we're very lucky not to have, and that's white nose, which affects oh. all of the onion family. Oh, right. And that's when you get the big blob of essentially white fungus growing around the base of the onion. Oh, okay. Or the uh, leeks get it too, actually. Uh-huh. But... Um, Cross fingers, we haven't uh -huh. got that That's here. That's not good. Okay. So, get some more Super. dug up and it's tatty and leek soup from well, now on. Yes, and I'm really excited that they've done actually so well. Can I just ask the uh, leaves there? Better uh, if it's got rust in it? Can best those put leave? it in, the ba in a bag. Right, and, uh, and not on the compost. Not on the compost. Okay, yeah. right, good. Now, uh, once I clear my leek area bed what happens to the bed kind of over the winter do we right we're just going to go off and have a quick look at uh, what the, some of the solutions are ah, okay good so peter earlier we spoke about green manure and i wasn't quite sure what that was could you maybe just explain the difference between that and mm -hmm. compost yeah green is manure there... is actually a confusing title because ah. it's actually living material oh. that you put into the ground and it will show you that in a minute. Good. But talking of that actual manure, yeah. this is our garden compost mm -hmm. and it's not quite ready yet because oh. essentially if we left it for much longer, because we've only been at this for what, six months or uh -huh. so? Okay. If, if we'd left it longer, I mean it's well rotted manure, uh -huh. manure now, but it would turn into a brown, lovely, crumbly uh, material that's okay to handle and it's not smelly. Okay. And in fact, Lewis is just about to deliver us another ah, load. Okay. When it comes. Great. And it's so, are you going to dig this into the soil or? Uh, no. What's going to happen is that uh, once we've got the delivery down and 
we've got it. There we go, Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> we've got the manure here. Uh -huh. And we tip it onto the bare ground. Okay. See, we've had a few. Uh -huh. Deliveries already. Deliveries been working already. hard with us today. And you can see how. It is a bit sticky. Yes, it is. It is yeah, a bit it's sticky. It's really got it's got lovely worms through it. Oh, so it does. Um, wow. And so we'll, good sign. That's a really good sign then. Yeah. We'll, we'll spread over the ground, and what is happening next is that over the winter, mm -hmm. the winter frosts and hopefully the worms as well, mm -hmm. will work on this stuff. So it, hopefully by next spring, is much more friable. Good mm -hmm. word, isn't it? Oh, it is. Easy, that, easy, easy what breaking does it mean? down. Oh, easy breaking easy. down. Oh, right, mm. okay. And that means that we can incorporate into the ground without doing too much mm -hmm. digging. Ah, okay. Which is good in two things. It's I mean mm -hmm. it's good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> or maybe there's some people who might argue that the digging is good for you, but uh, well, <laughs> the older you get, the more you feel. I know, the old back, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is that um, there's a growing belief that if you do not disturb the soil levels, uh huh then you're not upsetting what is already becoming a, okay. an ecological balanced system. Oh, great. So you have bacteria, yeah. fungi, uh -huh. and then you've got other higher organisms called nematodes and things like that. Oh. So it's yeah. almost like a, a whole ecosystem in itself and apparently that helps the whole process of the uh, plants getting the nutrition. The nutrients, yeah. Ah, oh, fantastic. So basically just rake it on top and yes. leave it. And then we'll come mm -hmm. back in the spring and see just how much it's mm -hmm. broken down mm -hmm. by. Great, yeah. So and can I just ask, the, we the weeds won't come through, will the weeds come through it? Or does that kind of, the weeds, no. suppresses the weeds? I don't know. Do you think it will keep the weeds down, Lewis? Yeah. Yeah, it, it tends does. to act ah. as a mulch as okay. well. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. As, the, the one thing that we perhaps worry about is that uh, unless you get in the composting process mm. a fearsome heat, and sometimes if we put seeds, okay. weeds with seeds on the compost heat, uh -huh. then they can then germinate. Then but they, ah, right, okay, I'm afraid weeding you. is a whole part of the whole process of yeah, gardening. Indeed. So indeed. we'll go and talk about the green manure mm. now mm -hmm. and, and how you apply it. Yep, great. So, when uh, Peter said green manure, I was expecting to see a pile of manure with green plants in it. I didn't realise when he held up the bag here, green manure seeds, that this is a whole different process, Peter. Yeah. Can you explain? Sure. Um, now, the one that you've got here uh -huh. is actually a type of ryegrass. Uh -huh. It's called Hungarian grazing rye. Yep. It's winter hardy. So when we sow it onto the ground, yeah. it will germinate, mm -hmm. its roots will hold the top level of the soil mm -hmm. together and it mm -hmm. stops the winter rains essentially from washing mm -hmm. out any nutrients. Okay. And the, that, that's just one of them. Yeah, okay. There's two the more. The others here, yeah, we've got clover. Now clover is an interesting one because uh, clover has little nodules on the roots uh -huh. like all the uh -huh. legume family. Uh -huh. And you know what they do? Yeah, nitrogen. Fix nitrogen yep. from the atmosphere. I do know that. And this one, the though, other one, do I now, know this one? I, I get asked a question a lot, and that's why uh -oh. are the f fields, the potato fields, uh -huh. surrounded by a blue flower? Oh, right, yeah. Now, this mm -hmm. is a thing called Facilia, mm. and it's uh, got very fine filigree foliage followed by a kind of purpley blue flower. Yeah, okay. And what the farmers have it in the fields for is to attract in the beneficial insects. Oh, I had no idea. Especially Goodness. hoverflies. Okay. Because the hoverflies then lay their eggs in aphid col or aphid col uh, uh -huh. colonies. Uh -huh. And then, of course, they yep. control the pests, pests without using pesticides. Great. So hmm. these ones, um, you sow them any time between... Well, this is kind of like the... The end so it's a, mm -hmm. an experiment for us as well oh, okay uh, if we get a warm autumn there'll be no problem mm -hmm. um, but it, the, the crucial bit is to get the central the, the first germination going oh, okay because it is kind of late ah, but we haven't missed the boat yet okay so okay. in order to uh, right mm -hmm. in order to get the ground ready yep you've got some we've light the raking. bed's been cleared mm -hmm. uh, the guys have helped us do the, all the weeding 
-huh. And also raking it to get in a tilth. Ah, okay. Tilth? Tilth. Means? Tilth, tilth essentially is when, as uh, Lewis reminded us, getting rid yep. of all the stone, the big stones. Ah, okay. Yep. So that when we sow the seed, mm -hmm. there's a fine tilth. In other mm -hmm. words, it's just broken mm -hmm. down. Yep. Now this is really important for all seed sowing because the more of a tilth you have and the flatter the surface when you're broadcasting seed like yeah, this, or even sowing in rows, mm. it means that the seeds tend to end up at the same depth. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. once we're satisfied mm -hmm. that the tilth is correct, mm -hmm. then if you can read off how much we have to use. So do you want to start with the for it sure. dry? Okay, so it says, yeah, it says you can sow from August to October, so that's fine. Suits most soil types. Uh, rake to a fine tilth. Yep. Now it says to broadcast seed, 17 grams per square metre, and you rake it in. Right. Well, if you're not sure what that would look like, no, no, it's I a very have good a clue. idea to just get four canes, cheap, okay. and then measure them to one metre, mm -hmm. and pop them over your bed like this. Right. Okay. And then, of course, there's some. You get your kitchen scales, whatever, okay. and you measure out the 17 grams, uh -huh. which I know would but happen you, to be... I knew you would I do know. it without the kitchen scales, Peter. There I knew go. you'd have a... So, okay. just a sort of modest handful about that right. size. It would be the equivalent of, say, half an ounce, which uh -huh. is always around about 17 grams. Okay. And then, don't do it all at once, but what's the idea is to scatter it going one way. Uh -huh. Oh! Oh, all one way. All one way. All oh, right, okay. And because, I mean, why? I mean, is there a reason for that? It's to get a very even distribution. If you go oh. one way, okay, and then you've still got half left, and you come oh, the other you way. Oh, go the other way. Ah, okay. And you can see any gaps you've left. Uh huh. And so you can. Right. Yep. You can target the, the gaps yep. that you've made. I can understand the logic of that. Yeah. So, and the other thing, of oh. course, is that once they're sown. Obviously, we'd sow the entire bed. Yeah, sure. We remove the uh -huh. quadrat. Yep. And so that gives you some kind of an idea about what uh, it should look like. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then you just rake, rake it again. Yes, and you okay. very lightly yeah. rake it in. And so you, okay. you're making sure that the majority of the seed is covered mm -hmm. by the soil. Now, what about... Pigeons, good, very mice. good question. This just looks like a feast for it pigeons, does, doesn't it? It does, it does, yeah. So it might be a good idea to either put some CDs on strings that okay. people use, mm -hmm. or netting. Netting, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, netting good. Good. I think netting would be the better solution. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, Lewis probably. doesn't agree that the CDs work, is no. that right? That's the Hungarian okay. period, right? When would we expect germination then? If we're be... having temperatures like this, it's yeah. what, about 14, 15 degrees, mm -hmm. and oh. no frosts mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. then we should have germination within a fortnight. Mm. Okay, so quite The other soon. thing that you could do, of course, yep. which has the keeping the pigeons off, is to use a horticultural fleece. Uh-huh, yep. And yep. cover the, the area with the horticultural yeah. fleece, and so yeah. that warms the ground yep. up as well, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And, keeps and keeps the pigeons Smug, off. Yeah, and this the rye grass we can buy at any. Where would we get? I Did think you'd probably have to go or? through a special uh, organic garden okay. catalog. Some right. of the seed companies actually do provide them as well. But these look. But you can you see that that's them. from a well-known organic, organic yeah. seed firm. Okay. Now, what do you reckon we would do with it in the spring? Cut it. Cut it. Yep. And then. Dig it into the soil, or yeah. we'd have to leave it for a while. I'm guessing. I've no idea, really. Dig it into the soil. Yes. In fact, probably the best thing to do would be to hoe it off. Oh. So you hoe it off. Yes, okay. because you don't want it to re-sprout once you've cut it. Ah, so because the, the seed heads it, would they, be. They can come away, especially the clover. Would. Oh right. Okay. Um, the other thing, of course, is that had we started the facilia off earlier, yeah. so it was a bigger plants mm -hmm. now. It means that come April and May we'd have it flowering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would be ideal for a, an area that you were using for a later crops. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hoe it off, let it wilt, and then very. Okay. 
So you're not digging really deep. Yeah. You're just more just or less on burying the it. level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then after the so for, with the green manure, you can plant any crop on this patch. Or it's particular crops with the green manure, or well, because this is your tatty patch, isn't it? Well, that, this was potatoes. Ah, but not next year. Yeah. Obviously. Oh. If, if you're using it for on a potato, then mm -hmm. you would just dig it in because yeah. you have to dig potatoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas something that follow this on would be a very good for the peas and bean family. Ah, okay. Because okay. if you're worried at all about the rotting vegetation, mm -hmm. use, there's an expression called uh, nitrogen robbery, mm. which is when if you've got bacteria working on breaking down the green manure, mm. then the plant roots are not getting the available oh, nitrogen. Oh, okay. So follow it on you don't need to green manure all of your areas no but it's a good no, one no. if you're for following it on for peas and beans okay mm -hmm. because all the other crops we've got that other technique whereby we covered yeah. mulch the ground mm -hmm. with our with our manure mm -hmm. for it to break down mm -hmm. great so good there'll be a, another couple of winter jobs coming up and mm -hmm. we'll be back to talk about them mm -hmm. good thanks for coming Kath. not at all pleasure as always i always learn something new every time i come here it's amazing great thank you Thank you.